this video will be in four parts. One, the intro and background about me. Two, the general plan that I usually recommend. Three, tips and the biggest advice that I would give for someone in each section of the SAT. And four, um, resources and books, some of which I've used, some of which I heard are really good. Hi everyone, my name is Casey and I'm a rising junior at Hopkins. Um, not to brag, but this is good for context so that you guys believe my SAT tips, but I got a 1530 out of 1600 on the SAT. I took it once and it was several years ago, but since then I've been tutoring like friends, family, siblings informally, and I've also um, been a paid tutor as an SAT like test prep company for two years now, I think. Yeah, roughly two years now, and I've had many, many students. I think I've had over 30 students at this point, and all my students improve their scores by usually 200 points. From I think in that aspect, I do have a little bit of authority here, so I wanted to share some advice and some tips and uh, plan for you guys so that you guys can study for your SAT. Um, before I get started, I will be looking down because my notes are here. Also, um, my thoughts on this test, I think it's kind of stupid, like it's a silly test. Um, it does not measure your intelligence, it does not measure how successful you will be in college, and I mean, but you have to take it anyway, so my thoughts on this is just to like get it over with as soon as possible and just try to go like the most quick and efficient and like foolproof method. So that's what I have for you today. I would say that there are four phases in the SAT test. First, you take a diagnostic test. Second, you learn concepts. Third, you do untimed practice tests. And then finally, you'll do timed practice tests. And I'll explain each phase in a bit. First, I want you to take a diagnostic test. So what is a diagnostic test? It's essentially, you just take a practice test, but you take it like under testing conditions. You wanna sit in a room, you wanna take the full like three hour and something minutes, take the correct breaks, take the amount of time that you're given, and treat it like it's the real thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna find the score for this, and we're gonna use this as a baseline score. I think it's really nice to take a diagnostic test as you're studying for the SAT because you can see like your improvement incrementally. You will, for a fact, as you practice and you study, there is a foolproof way, and you will improve. And when you have that starting score, it's really nice to see like, oh, I went up by 30 points today compared to the last test. Like it's a really nice feeling. The second reason why we wanna take a practice test is because we will use this practice practice test to see where we have weaknesses, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, and then we'll make a study plan based on that. The second part is learning the concepts. So once you've taken the diagnostic test, you will likely get a score and that score may or may not be what you want. It's very rare that you'll start off and get the score, the exact dream score that you have, right? So you'll go through and look at the different questions that you got wrong and try to identify if you have any patterns in the things you get wrong. Are you really bad at the reading section? Are you really bad at writing section? Do you not know grammar rules and punctuation? Do you not know um, geometry very well? Figure out what your weaknesses are in this part. You want to kind of compile a list of what you think you suck at and then go and figure out, try to understand it. You have free resources for this. Like you can go on YouTube and plug in any sort of like concept that you might not know and you'll find a million things about it. You can also look for books or old textbooks and whatnot and just go through and hit one concept at a time that you think you're missing and you want to learn it almost to a hundred percent and then that's when we'll get to the next phase now once you feel like you're comfortable and you feel like you've done a decent bit of learning and you think you've covered all the concepts on the diagnostic test at this point you should be able to look at your diagnostic test retake it you don't have to retake it but I'm saying you should be able to retake it and go I'm much more confident this time because I know XYZ that I didn't know before once that is over it's time to take untimed practice tests. So I say untimed because I really want you to focus on um, getting the answers correct. SAT is the standardized test, which means that there are patterns to everything. After a couple of untimed practice tests, you will notice for sure that question types look very similar. They're pretty much the same. The structures for the different passages look the same. The structures for the math questions look the same, but they tweak it just a little bit so that it's not quite familiar, but you will notice patterns. That's what I want you to figure out at this point in your untimed practice test phase. Don't worry about time, just worry about getting it correct. So don't worry about pressure, don't worry about test taking techniques, just get it correct. 
Finally, the last bit is taking time practice tests. Now this is the point where you want to start personalizing it a little bit. I have, for my students, I have tips that I give to them about what I think is the best way and the quickest and the most efficient way to answer questions, but that might be different for you. So at this point, you're going to sit down for the full three hours and something minutes. You can take breaks as per like the slot that you're given. Even better, if your test is at 8 a.m., you might want to get up and be ready by 8 a.m. and take it at 8 like you would in a real scenario. Also, I would recommend like going to a place where you'll be easily distracted, such as, I don't know, your living room, a cafe or something, because um, on the actual SAT, even though you're supposed to be quiet, there will be like some guy that's like sniffling and another guy's blowing his nose and it'll be like horrible because you'll still be distracted. So it's really good for you to be in a very like test-like scenario, if that makes sense. Um, you have to, I mean, part of taking this test is not just knowing stuff and being able to do the type of questions that they give. Part of taking this test is being able to concentrate for as long as like three something hours and being able to concentrate while you have like a bunch of distractions around you, whether or not you like it. This is just a fact and you will have to deal with it. So you might as well practice ahead of time for that. So when your test day comes, um, you'll have no anxiety. So I told you earlier that I wanted you guys to take a diagnostic test. Now I'm gonna say like the rough schedule slash plan I would recommend, but this is assuming that you want a 1500, that's probably why you clicked on this video. Um, and if your goal score is higher or lower, you can adjust it, but the principle is more or less the same. I would say if you're someone that is underneath 1350, as a tutor, that usually signifies to me that you have a lot of concepts you just don't know, you've never heard of, you don't understand very well, or it's been a long time since you like did it in high school or whatever, um, in like ninth or 10th grade or whatever it is. So I would spend a larger portion of your time actually learning the concepts and trying to learn them well. So I would say probably like the first half of your time is just spent on learning concepts. And then the second half of your time, it's up to you and based on what you feel comfortable, do untimed and time practice tests. Now, I can be a little bit like, in my personal SAT experience, I did like a lot of practice tests. That's also because I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I don't think that's necessary, but I do think that you should take at least three to five maybe untimed practice tests before you move on to the time ones because I really want you to like recognize the test and how it works before you move on. But if you're not comfortable and you have all the time in the world and you take as much as you need and then move on to the time portion afterwards. Now, if your score is above a 1350, that tells me that it's probably a combination of you being a little bit rusty on some topics, but also you probably making careless mistakes or you're not having enough time. So in that case, I would spend less of your time on learning concepts. So maybe like a third of your time maximum, I'd say, and then move on to untimed practice tests, see what you get wrong, and then afterwards move to the timed practice test. A lot of people, if they have above 1350, the main combination that they struggle with once they know like the concepts is um, timing, like getting it all done under time, especially in the reading section, timing, and then also um, careless mistakes. So this is the point where I would be very intentional about the way I solve problems. I wouldn't do like, for example, in math, I'm not going to do extra unnecessary steps that will lead me to being careless and whatnot. Those are all things that you will figure out for yourself as you're at that point and you're improving. Now, if there is one thing I want you to take away from this video is that you have to review your incorrect answers. You will not improve if you don't review your incorrect answers. It's kind of uncomfortable because you have to, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you take a whole test, it's three to four hours long, and then afterwards you're like, you have to check your correct or incorrect answers. You see the incorrect ones, you have to go back, read the section, read the passage, read the sentences, or you, for math, you have to go back and go see, did I get this wrong because it was careless? Did I get it wrong because of time? Did I get it wrong because I don't understand it fully? And then you to go back and really understand everything and make sure not to make the same mistake the next time. That's what's going to make you improve. Personally, when I was doing my tests, part of why I did a ridiculous amount of tests is because I did not realize that's what I had to do at first and it took me a while for that to click which is so intuitive when I think about it now but like at the time I didn't think about that so I did a lot of tests instead and then I realized I'm not going to improve if I don't really know the same things the next time so that's why 
The key is to check your incorrect answers, make sure you understand them, and then move on to the next practice test. Don't do the next practice test until you're 100% sure about the ones you got wrong in the one you just did. So for reading, I would say that the biggest mistake is people tend to assume and use prior knowledge. Please don't do that. The reason being that this is a standardized test, meaning, well, this test is standardized and um, there has to be evidence for every single answer that you choose. So in the reading section, what you really need to master is recognizing the type of passages that SAT offers, tends to offer. Now, of course, it'll change a little bit from this test and that test, but like there's, there tends to be a pattern. And then um, being able to find what pieces of the text is evidence for your question and your answer. That's the key. For the writing section, I would say that it is very important to learn grammar and punctuation rules. That's a big part of the writing section. However, that's not the only part of the writing section. Um, you want to treat it more like you're editing your friend's essay rather than treating it like um, grammar and punctuation exercise. The reason being, it's called the writing section and not like the grammar section or whatever because it's helping you hone down your writing skills as much as it is important for you to have the technical aspect correct like not saying the wrong grammar stuff and not using the wrong punctuation that's very important but it's also just as important for your ideas in the passage to flow and for this for there to be some sort of a structure so basically take away from the writing section is treat it like you're reading someone's um, essay, like your friend's essay, and you're editing it for them. And you're like, this sentence doesn't make sense here. That makes no sense here. Here you're wrong in your grammar. Like that's, that's how you should treat it. And it'll help you if you put yourself in that mindset. For the math section, I would say that a lot of people tend to make careless mistakes. And that's like usually people's downfall once they like learn their concepts and everything. So I would take a lot of um, tests, untimed and timed, and when I make careless mistakes, I would see what kind of um, patterns I usually make careless mistakes on and then create systems so I don't make that same mistake again. For example, for me, I get like stupid things wrong, like plus minuses and brackets wrong, right? So the way I try to minimize my chance of making a careless mistake is I try to write as little math as possible on my piece of paper because usually the more I write the more I like miscopy a sing like a bracket or a plus or a minus and those are things that you'll figure out that's personalized to you as you take practice tests which is why it's very important for you to take them and for you to review the incorrect answers afterwards. Now for resources um, usually you want to try to stick to like college board produced resources the reason being that I mean, they're the most accurate because they're the ones that create the actual SAT, right? Uh, I would try to avoid using um, other test prep companies' books as much as possible unless you finish with all of the college board ones. Um, for the best resources, I would start off with Khan Academy just because it's free and it has it's partnered with College Board, so why wouldn't you use it, right? Like, it's free. And then after that, I like the Black Book. Um, I'll have links down in the description and if you could do me a favor and if you intend on purchasing it, can you use the link in the description because I'll get a teeny eensy weensy cut and um, you also get the book but, but no extra cost to you but I get a little bit of a cut so that would be very helpful, thank you. Um, but other than that, anyways, that book, what it does is it explains the first four practice tests that are offered by College Board, I believe, and it has very... Um, detailed explanations and when you're going through and um, doing your incorrect answers this might be helpful because you actually have someone that like knows what they're doing explain why you're wrong and then usually that'll lead to like you being able to find your wrong answers by yourself when you do the rest of the test by yourself and then another book I would recommend is like the College Board Official SAT Study Guide with Practice Tests and then afterwards Books that I use that are from other companies that I thought were the closest to um, the College Board ones. I thought the Princeton Review books were uh, pretty close. I tried Kaplan. I tried a bunch of others that I don't even remember the name of anymore, but none of them are very close to the actual SAT in my opinion. I would get like very skewed scores. Like I would get 
either I, I never would get a really high score but I would get like really un unbelievably low scores even though on the SAT my skill level was like a 1500 so I wouldn't recommend those but when I took the Princeton Review ones I thought they were great um, I took the SAT in I think October 2019 so the books I used were the Princeton Review 2019 and 2020 10 practice test set I I would assume that the current ones, because they've had more since then, like 2021, 22, 23, I assume that those are more accurate and better as they make more. So if you wanted to use newer versions, you could as well, but I'm just telling you what I used. If you clicked on this video, you're probably um, either a parent with a child that's about to take the SAT or a high school student yourself. Just like a few final thoughts before you go, just remember that this test does not measure how intelligent or how successful you are. However, you might want to give it your best shot because it could be very helpful for you uh, for applying to colleges and whatnot. And also, um, do it at your own pace. Give yourself enough time and then for sure, like you will get an improved score if you listen to what I said and really like follow through with it. Um, you will get an improved score at least and you will eventually get your dream score. And really, it's about putting in some effort and being consistent about it and eventually you'll build up to that level. So on test day, you won't be anxious. And also, if you're anxious about it, like you have test anxiety, I understand. I have some students that have test anxiety. Just one thing that helps me and helps some of my students is to remember that this is a test that you can take many, many times. When you walk in the first time, you can tell yourself, okay, this is just my test run. This is like my trial run. I'm gonna try my best and if it isn't good enough, that's okay, right? So that, that can be your attitude and that would probably help relieve some of that test anxiety. Um, and if you have practice in conditions where like you feel like you're in a test conditions like I recommended in the time practice test session section, then you'll probably be much more confident as well. So yeah, it's fine, you got this, um, yes. And feel free to email me or comment down below if you have any qu quick questions that I can answer. And also if you liked my video and you thought I made sense, then could you please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that. And final thing, quick shameless advertisement. If you want me as your tutor, then please email me. It's in the description and I will tell you if I'm available. That would be awesome as well. Okay, thank you, bye.